Bisyat Deshmaya, we're going to learn Psochim Daf Samaches. We're going to start in the middle of the Omud. We're going back to the Mishnah at the beginning of the Perak. The Mishnah said at the beginning of the Perak on Daf Samaches Omud base that one of the things that one's allowed to do with the Korban Pesach, even on Shabbos, when Erev Pesach falls on Shabbos, is Michui Krovov. It's something to do with the intestines called Krovov, and it's Michui. Now we know what, what the word means, what it's coming to teach us is that you're allowed to clean out the intestines on Shabbos and don't wait till Matzah Shabbos to do that and in preparation for roasting the Korban Pesach because by that time the intestines, because of the, the foul nature of, the, of whatever's still inside them, is going to destroy them. The question is, what does the word Michui actually mean? My Michui Krovov, says the Gemara of Huna Omar Shemenakvin Basakin. That Ravuna says that it means that you make holes into the intestines to allow the, the foul remains inside them to flow out of them. And Rashi's got two explanations here whether the word michui actually means the, from, Elosh, from the term of michui shemoitzi peresh rako de nimchas peseicha. It's talking about where it became liquidified, where what was inside just turned into fluid, into liquid, that's what the word michui means. Or possibly a second explanation in Rashi, that michui actually is the act of making the holes, or is called michui. Rav Chia Barav, Barav Omar, Rav Chia Barav had a different explanation, what does the word michui mean? He says that the word michui actually comes from, from being repellent, from being putrid, from something which is very horrible. And he's referring to the shirka, to the slime of the demi'ayo, which is in the intestines. The nafka, and these emerge, this slime emerges, agav duchge de sakina, when the knife, it, when the pressure of the knife goes onto the intestines, then these, this slime is going, to, is going to emerge, is going to come out of the intestines, and that way the intestines will not get foul. Omer Beleza. My Tama de Barav, where does, where's the source of what Rav Barav said? Where do we find in a posuk that the word Michui actually means um, putrid, means repent, repellent? Because it says in the posuk, the posuk says in Yeshaya, Vero'u kvosim kedovrom, v'chorvois meichim gorim yoichelu. What does it mean, v'chorvo ismeichim gorim yechelu? V'chorvo means the, the ruined homes. Meichim of the, let's translate it, the literal translation is the fat ones, but it's referring here to the roshoim. Gorim yechelu, the strangers will consume them. My mashma, where do you see here that the word meichim actually means foul? Kedematargim Rav Yosef, in the way that Rav Yosef, as we see Rav Yosef translated this, and Rav Yosef was very acquainted with the Targum of Yonason ben Azil, as Rashi in Kedushan Daf Yud Gimel teaches us, and in Targum Yonason it says, on these words of V'chorvo Ismeichim, Gorim Yechelu, it says V'nichsehem, the possessions, the Rashaya of the wicked people, Tzadikayo, the righteous people, Yechsenun will inherit. So you see that the Chorvo Ismeichim means the possessions of the wicked ones, and the wicked people, they are the ones who are very repellent and putrid, and, in, and that's in this context, Rav Chir Barav said that the word Michui, Krovov, means to remove the, the slime from within the intestines. Continues the Gemara, that same Posuk, the beginning of the Posuk said, V'ro'u Kvosim, the sheep will graze, Kedovrom. Kedovrom, in literal translation, would mean as is their habit. Oma Menashe Bar Yirmiya, Oma Rav. It was said in the name of Rav that the word Kedovrom actually means Kemedubor Bom, as is stated to them, as was stated to them by the prophets. That means there's a, there's a concept called Vro'u Kvosim. There's a, some type of the literal translation is sheep, but there's people who are referred to as sheep who they will graze, they will be given their lives, kedovrom, as was stated to them by the prophets, by the Novi. My, my kemedubarbom, 
Where do we find that the Novi, that the Prophet actually told us that the sheep would graze? Omar Abaya, Rabbiah says it's actually the next four words in the Pasuk when it says, What does that mean? It, that, that means that the tzaddikim are going to inherit what, what the goyim, what the Roshoim, more accurately, what the Roshoim are going to, the homes of the Roshoim. And that is, those are the words which are Kedavram, as was said to them. That means Varau Kvosim actually means that the Tzadikim are going to inherit from the Roshoim. Kedavram, Kmedubar Bom, as was stated to them, that Vachor Voismechim, that the ruins of the, of the Roshoim, Gorim Yechel, will be inherited by the Tzadikim. That's how Abaya explained it. Omale Rova. Rava commented to Abaya and he said, Bishleima iksiv chorvois, if it would have says, Vrau kvosim, the sheep will graze, referring to the tzaddikim getting the livelihood. Kedavram chorvois mechim gorim yechelu, as was stated to them that, chorvois mechim, etc. Then Kedavramus, then what you're saying would be understood. Hashta dechsiv vachorvois mechim goru yechelu, Gorim Yechelu, Milsa Chritikoma. There's an extra vov there as if there's two independent things. One is Varau Kvasim Kedavram, that the sheep will graze as was stated to them. And also Vachor Vaismechim, Gorim Yechelu, the possessions of the Roshoim will be inherited by the Tzadikim. But it's two separate things. And then the question comes back what's this sheep grazing Kedavram that was stated to them? Where was it stated to them? And what's it referring to? Elo Amarova, Rova explains, Kedur of Hananul Amarav, as it was said in the name of Rav, the Omar of Hananul Amarav, Asidim Tzadikim, the Tzadikim are destined, Shayichyu Es Hamesim, they will be ones to resurrect the dead. They are going to do the Tchias Hamesim. How do we know that? Ksiv Hocha, it says here in this Pasuk, Vrau Kvosim Kedavram. Or Siv Hosom, and it says in another Pasuk in Micha, that Boshon and Gilod will graze, as in former times. So you have two psukim. You have one posuk that says, Vrau kvosim, the sheep will graze. Another posuk, Yiru Boshon Vigilod, that Voshon and Gilod will graze. So you see that there's something, there's Xero Shava. And there's something between the two, something similar between the two. And so we're going to understand what Boshon Vigilod is, and then we'll understand that that was the Kedavram. That's what was stated. It's referring to the other Pasuk, where it also speaks about grazing, and referring to the Voshon and Gilod. Who are they? Voshon zu Elisha. Voshon is alluding to Elisha. Habomina Boshon. We know that Elisha, he originated from Boshon. How do we know? Shenemar, it says in the Pasuk in Divra Yomim, Yoyel Horoish, Veshofom Hamishne, Veyanai, Veshofot, Baboshen. That Yanai and Shofot came from Boshon. Uchsivan, it says in another Pasuk in Melochim, it says that Poi Elisha ben Shofot. That Elisha was who was a Novi, he was the son of Shafot, and Shafot came from Boshon, as it says, Vyanai Vashafot Baboshon. So when it says in the Pasuk, Yiru, Voshon Vigilot, Boshon is referring to to Elisha. And the Pasuk says, What do we know about Elisha? Ashayotzak Maim, he poured water Al Yede Elio on the hands of Eliyoha Novi. Who's Gilod? Gilod is Eliyoha Novi. How do we know that? Shenemra, it says in the Pasuk in Melachim, Vayoymer Eliyahu HaTishbi. Eliyahu HaTishbi said, Mitoishvei Gilod. He was from the inhabitants of Gilod. So you see that Eliyahu Novi was Gilod. So coming back to the original Pasukim, what Rav said, Asidim Tzadikim, the Tzadikim are going to be, Shayichyu Esamesim, they are going to resurrect the dead. And that's what we learn in this Pasuk, Vrau Kvosim, the sheep will graze, is referring to the Tzadikim, well, Kvosim is referring to Klal Yisrael, and the Vrau Kvosim is referring actually to the Tzadikim. The Tzadikim will cause the will cause all the people to graze, to come back to life. Kedavram, in the same way as was stated, the same way as we find with Elio and with Elisha. And that is how Rava explained this pasuk. Omer of Shmuel bar Nachmeni, Omer of Yonason. Asidim tzadikim shiich yumeisim, the tzadikim are going to, they are destined 
to resurrect the dead, Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Koyomar Hashem Tzvokois, Oyd Yeshu, they will yet sit, Zakenim, the old men, or Zakenos, the old women, Berachoyves Yerushalayim, in the streets of Yerushalayim, Veish, and each man, Mishantoy his staff, his stick, Beyodoy in his hands, Neroiv Yomim, from his great age. So you see that it's going that it's going to be in Yerushalayim, in, in Yerushalayim are going to be the old people who will have a stick. They will need a stick to help them walk due to their old age. Ursiv. And it says in another Pasuk regarding Elisha when he did his Trias Amesim, the Pasuk says the Samto that Elisha told Geichazi, the Samto Mishanti, you should place my staff, my stick, Al Pneanar on the face of the boy that needed Trias Amesim. And indeed Ultimately, this child woke. And so you see that the way Tchias HaMesim is done is with this stick, with a staff. So when it says that then it's referring to all those Tzadikim, the Ish is the Tzadikim, who will be holding their staffs in their hand, they will be doing Tchias HaMesim, like Elisha, who instructed Tchias HaMesim to be done with his Mishantoi, with his staff. Continues the Gemara. Ula Romi Ula asked an apparent contradiction. Ksiv in one pasuk it says, Bila Hamoves, that death will be concealed, Lonetzach, forever. Or Ksiv in another pasuk it says, Kihanar, the youth, Ben Meo Shono Yomus. They will die, but even though they will be dying, they will die at very old age. That even the youth, when they die, they will be a hundred years old. So you see there, that death is still going to exist. And it's not going to be bila, it's not going to be concealed entirely. Says the Gemara Loi Kashia, it's not a contradiction, can be Yisrael, can be Akum. With regarding Klan Yisrael, death will be totally removed and concealed. However, regarding the Goyim, the Oivde Avei the Goyim, they, for them, death will still exist. Asks the Gemara, Voivde Kechovim my Bo Hosam, what are the Goyim doing there? Who needs them there at that point in time, at some point after Mashiach comes? Answers the Gemara de Chsiv, it says in the Pasuk, V'omdu zorim, that strangers will stand, V'ro'u tzoinchem, and they will tend to the flocks, Uvnei neichor, and the foreigners, Akikoreichem, they will be the ones who will do the plowing for you, and they will be the ones taking care of your vineyards. So there will be Goyim taking care of our needs, and they will they will still be dying. However, within Klan Yisrael, death will be totally concealed. Continues the Gemara. Rav Chizda, Romi, Rav Chizda asked an apparent contradiction. Ksiv, it says in one posuk, V'chofro halavono, the moon will be embarrassed, V'uvoisho hachamo, and the sun will be ashamed. And that seems that their light of the sun and the moon is going to become diminished, is going to become, is going to switch off, so to speak. Ursiv, and it says in another pasuk, that the light of the moon of then is is going to be like the light of the sun. And the light of the sun of then, Shivosaim. Shivosaim means seven times seven. It's going to be 49 times Koir Shivasayomim. And as much as seven days of light of today, which means 49 times seven, that's 343 times the brightness of today's sun is going to be the sun of then. So if Chizda asks, if the sun is going to be so bright and the moon is then going to shine like the sun, why is the moon embarrassed and the sun ashamed? So, and, and if they are ashamed and embarrassed because they're going to be diminished, then... How do we understand the Pasuk regarding the brightness of the sun? Says the Gemara Loikashi, it's not a contradiction. Kan When it comes to Oilam Abba, and all we're going to have in Oilam Abba, we're going to bask in the light of the Shechina, at that point, we won't need the sun, we won't need the moon, they're going to be diminished, and, and indeed, it's going to be V'chofra Alavono Uboisho Hachamo. However, Kan Nimoisha Mashiach, but the time before that, before Oilam Abba, in the days of Mashiach, then we're not yet going to have that level of light that we're going to have in Oilem Abba, and therefore we still need the sun and the moon as we know them. But however, the sun is going to be 343 times stronger than the, than the way we have it now. 
And Rashi says here, then Oilam Abba Shaloye, Boilom Elo Ziv Zoyar Marish Shina. All we're going to have is basking in the light of the Shina. Continues the Lugu and asks the Gemara, Ula Shmuel, according to the opinion of Shmuel, Do Omar, Ein Bein Oilam Azeli Moisa Mashiach. Shmuel maintains that the only difference between today and the days of Mashiach is Elo Shibud Malchiyos Bilvad, is only our job, our subjugation in the exiles to the to, to the nations, that's all that's going, when Mashiach comes, that's going to terminate. But everything else, the whole running of the world, is going to run the same way as it is till now. If so, the Pasuk that says, cannot be referring to Yemaisa Mashiach. The sun's going to be as bright when Mashiach comes as it is today. So how are we going to explain these Pesukim? How are we going to explain the Psukim? Says the Gemara, according to Shmuel, both those Psukim are referring to Oilim Abba. And nonetheless, Vula Ikashi is not a contradiction. Because in Oilim Abba, there's going to be different camps. In the camp where the Shechina is going to be revealed, there indeed, there'll be no need for any sun or moon. And there the pos- and on that place, the Posok of Vachofra, Lavona, Voisha, Chama will apply. But in the camps of the Tzadikim, where the light will be not as strong as the Shechina, there we're going to need the sun to be as bright as it's going to be, 343 times as bright as it is today. Continues the Gemara. Rav Romi asked an apparent contradiction. Ksiv it says in the Pasuk, Ani Omis, I, I Hashem, I cause people to die, Va'achaya, and I cause people to live. And it says the next words in the Pasuk, Mochatzti, I wound people, Vani Erpa, and I heal people. So the, the Gemara asks, Hashta achuye mechaye. If Hashem is capable of, of, of bringing people to life, Mar peloi kol shekein, of course he can heal them. So why does the Pasuk have to say that Mochatzti, Vani Erpa, that I wound and I can heal people, after the Pasuk already said that I give people life? Elo Omar HaKadosh Baruch what the Posuk was coming to say, what Hashem was teaching us in this Posuk was, Ma ani memis ani mechaya. Not that, don't understand it as, ani omis, I make people die. Va'achaya, and I also make people be born. No. The very same bodies that I caused to die, those ones are going to be resurrected, there's going to be tcheas amesim, they're going to come back to life. And that similar kamoisha mochatsi vanierpo, in the same way as when I heal a wounded person, you can't say, I wounded one person and I healed somebody else. Healing is a concept that only exists on a wounded person. So, in the same way as a healing is done to a wounded person, so too the giving of life will be to the dead person. And this is one of the psukim that teach us of trias amesim. Tonura bonon, ani omus vachaya. The Pasuk says that I cause people to die and I cause them to live. I may have thought that it's some people die, some people are born in the way the world is accustomed to run today. Talmud Leima, that's why the Pasuk continues that I wound and I heal those who are wounded. In the same way as a Makkah is when something is hit, or a fuah, and then it gets healed. Be'echod is the same body that gets hit as the one that gets healed. Af misa v'chaim, be'echod, so too the person getting life is the same body that previously had, had died. Mikan tshuva lo'imri me'in tchiyas ha'meisim in ha So those who question, where is tchiyas ha'meisim mentioned in Tanakh? The answer is in this posuk. Dover achir. Another explanation in this pasuk, There's a sequence of events. We asked a question, if, the, if it's just teaching us about Hashem's strengths, why does it first mention that He can make people live and then He can heal them? Healing is less of a feat than giving them life. So now the, Gemara, the according to this Dover Acher, this explanation, what the, Gemara, what the pasuk means to say is that there's a sequence. First, Hashem is going to resurrect the dead, those that were dead are going to become alive. That which was previously died is now going to be alive. And at a later stage after that, those that are wounded are going to be healed. And Rashi explains that people that when they died, they were sick, are going to, or they had, they had certain blemishes, for example, that they, they couldn't walk or they were blind, 
or they were deaf, they would wake up, they're going to become resurrected with those blemishes, and afterwards Hashem is going to heal them. Continues the Gemara. The Hector Chalovov. Going back to our Mishnah on Daf Samachayom at base, we saw there that another one of the things you're allowed to do to the Korban Pesach, even if Erev Pesach is on Shabbos, is you're allowed to be Makdir Chalovov, you're allowed to put the fats and the other parts that need to go onto the Mizbeach, you're allowed to put them onto the Mizbeach. And the truth is, we know that after the Zrik Hasadam, once the blood is sprinkled, the parts that need to go on the Mizbeach can be put up the whole night. We're talking here about Shabbos, Erev Pesach is Shabbos. Is it not better to wait till Matzah Shabbos and, and then put all the parts on the Mizbeach instead of being Mechalil Shabbos? No. We're going to see that there's a special reason that in spite of the fact that halachically they could have waited, we don't wait, and that's what the Mishnah is impressing on us, that Hector Chalov is done on Shabbos. Tanya Omrib, Shimon, boy or a, come and see, Kamo Chaviva Mitzvah Bashaita, how beloved is doing a mitzvah at the right time. Shari Hector Chalovim Ve'ivorim Upadorim, because the burning, putting onto the Mizbeach, the fats, the limbs, and pedorim, other types of fats, ksherim kolalailo, you're allowed to put them up the whole of the following night, which is Matzah Shabbos. Vein mamtinin lohem, we don't wait al till it's night, and this is because the most opportune time and most beloved time is to do a mitzvah at the right time. And Rashi Ra adds in, not only at the right time, but the first opportunity. Choviv lemahir mitzvah b'shaito. If you, the first opportunity to do the Hector Chalovo, Chalovim Veimurim is immediately after shechting the Korban, after the Zrika Saddam, that is when you're supposed to do it, even if it's Shabbos. Continues the Gemara. We saw in the Mishnah, back on the Samachayom at base, that even though you're allowed to do the things we've learned, the Shechita, Zrika Stoma, even though Zrika Saddam is not a Meloch, says over there that Zrika Saddam is just mentioned together with the Shechita, Umichui Krovov we learned about, Vaktoras Chalovov, Avol. The Mishnah says Avol. Number one, Tliosoi Vadochas Krovov, Einom Doichinis Shabbos. And then the Mishnah says other, another thing which is not Doich Shabbos is Harkavosoi. To have to carry the animal through Roshus Harabim to bring it to the base Amigdosh in the event that you did not bring it to the base Amigdosh before Shabbos. Or have also Michutz Letchum or bringing the animal from outside the Tchum to the base Amigdosh. The Chatichas Yeveltoi or cutting off a wart. You're not allowed to offer the Korban up with a wart on it. You have to remove it. Those three are only Osur Medrabonon. Carrying in Roshus Harabim is normally awesome in Atayra, but since this animal is alive and Chai Noise is Atzma, an animal carries itself, therefore it's only awesome in Rabbonon, and the same applies to bringing it from outside the Tchum. And cutting off the Yabeles, we're going to see, is going to be done with a Shinui, not with an instrument. These are all Midr Rabbonon. And nonetheless, since you could have and should have done it before Shabbos, Ein Doichin is a Shabbos, the Tanakhamas say you're not allowed to do them on Shabbos. Rabbi Yezo, Imer Doichin, Rabbi Yezo there in the Mishnah says that it is Doich Shabbos, and we're going to go into that a bit later. Says the Gemara, Harkov Osoi, Vav Osoi, Vechulu. The three things that the Chachomim say you're not allowed to do, Harkov Osoi, Av Osoi, from outside the Tchum and Chatichas Yaveltoi, asks the Gemara, Raminu, this seems to contradict a, a mission in Erevin. It says that, Yaveles B'Migdosh. You're allowed to cut off a wart in the base Amigdosh. Avloi Medina, but not on Shabbos, that means, but outside the base Amigdosh, referred to as Medina in the cities, outside the base Amigdosh, you're not allowed to cut the warts on Shabbos. And Vim and if you're doing it with an instrument, Kan Vikan Osur. Even in the base Amigdosh, you're not allowed to. So to cut it off with an instrument, which is an Av Malacha, which is geysers, similar to shearing, you're not allowed to do even in the base Amigdosh. You could have done it before Shabbos, according to the Tanakama. We'll, we'll come back. Let's leave if it's the Tanakama or not, but you're not allowed to do it. And, and in the outside, and, and doing it with your hands, not with an instrument, there the, it says in Erevin that you're allowed to do it in the base Amigdosh, but not outside the base Amigdosh. So you see clearly here that even in our mission it says you're not allowed to remove a wart. In, in Erevin it says that in the base Amigdosh you are allowed to remove the wart. It says the Gemara, answers the Gemara, Rebbe Lozov, Rebbe Yesi, Rebbe Chanina. They, there were two Amiroim, Rebbe Lozov, Rebbe Yesi, Rebbe Chanina, and they gave two different answers. Chad Omar, one of them said, 
idi v'idi b'yad. Both, let's assume that both Mishnayas are talking about removing the wart with one's hands. The Mishnah in Erevin, we know that he's talking about the hands. He says that in the Beis Hamikdash you're allowed to if it's with a hand, not with an instrument. But even the Mishnah in Psachim is talking about removing it with the hands, and nonetheless it's osa. Why? That it, where it says that it's osa on Shabbos in our Mishnah, it's talking about where the, where the wart is still damp, it's still moist, it's still considered as part of the animal, and therefore you're not allowed to remove it even with your hand. Hob, because you could have done it before Shabbos. Hobby Abosha. But the mission in Erevin there that says that you're allowed to remove it in the base of Migdosh is talking about when it was dry. And then it's not even awesome with Rabbonon to remove a dried up wart, and therefore you can remove it. That was one answer. The Chad Omar, the other explanation was, Idi v'idi b'lecha. It could be that the Mishnah, in our Mishnah in Psachim, that says it's Asa, is talking about a moist wart. And there the Mishnah is also talking about a moist wart. That a moist wart in the base of Migdash, if you remove it with your hands, you're allowed to remove it. And over here we're talking about a moist wart, and you're not allowed to remove it. V'loi kashi, it's not a contradiction. Ha b'yad, ha b'kli. Our Mishnah is talking about removing it with a vessel, with an instrument. You're not allowed to remove it with an instrument. Over there it says explicitly that when you're allowed to move it is only with your hands. Ask the Gemara. Uleman da Omar, ha b'yad ha b'kli. Mai tam aloi Omar, idi v'idi b'yad, v'loi kashi ha b'lach ha b'yavesha. According to the answer that explained that our Mishnah says it's Osir, is talking about using an instrument, why didn't it say no? Why didn't it say that our mission is talking about doing it with one's hands? And nonetheless, it's also because it's a damp wart, and, the, and an Erevin is talking about a dried wart. Omar Lachob, the answer is because he's going to tell you that a dried wart is not under discussion. Yavosha mifrach prichi. It's a dried wart just crumbles. And Rashi says that means that a dried wart could, wouldn't be called cutting. We're talking here about to cut a wart. You don't cut a dry wart. A dry wart just crumbles. And Tosa's got another explanation. Tosa says that if we were talking about a dried wart, and that if the mission in Erevin is talking about a dried wart, it would even be allowed to remove it with, a, with an instrument. Now the Gemara asks, And the answer that explained that our Mishnah was talking about a damp wart, and the Mishnah there was talking about a dried wart, Why didn't he answer that both Mishnahs are talking about a damp wart? In our Mishnah it's also because he's using an instrument, and over there, when it's muta, it's only with his hands. Omar the reason he didn't answer that, he will tell you, because Kli, Hoktoni Hosom, our Mishnah that says Osir, and you, that answer explains, because he's using an instrument, our Mishnah wouldn't have to tell us you're not allowed to use, you're not allowed to remove a wart with an instrument. It's explicit in Erevin that with a Kli, Imbe Kli, Kan Vakan Osir, the Mishnah here wouldn't have to say it specially. Hoktoni Hosom, Imbe Kli, Kan Vakan Osir. V'idoch. The other explanation that says that the Mishnah there is taught when it's muta is bayad and over here when it's also is bakli, how is he going to, what's he going to answer? Why, is, why would our Mishnah have to tell us you're not allowed to remove a wart with an instrument? It's explicit in Erevin. The answer is hodik toni kli hocha but plukta de Rabbi Lezer, Rabbi Shua, also leishminon. He wants to teach us a Chiddush that even if he's using an instrument, that the Mishnah says that it's Asa, however, according to Rabbi Lezer, in our Mishnah, Rabbi Lezer says even that is going to be muta, because Rabbi Lezer says you're allowed to do anything, even a, a Melocha min ha if it's something that is needed for the mitzvah. Continues the Gemara. Omer Rabbi Lezer, ma im shchita v'chulu. And this takes us back to our Mishnah on Dafsam Chayom at base, where there's now going to be a discussion between Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Yeshua. And Rabbi Kiva afterwards also follows with Rabbi Yeshua, what Rabbi Yeshua was holding, that according to Rabbi Yezer, anything that you need to do in order to bring a Korban Pesach, you're allowed to do. Rabbi Yezer says, I'll bring you proof. The proof that you're allowed to even do those things that you could have done before Shabbos, for example, Harkavoso Yavoso Yimichus Petchum and Chatichas Yaveltoi. Rabbi Lezer says, "Is the Kalvachoyim Halidinhu Umayim Shchita Shehi Mishum Melacha." The 
activity of shechita, which is a melacha min if you do a shechita on Shabbos. Doich es Shabbos nonetheless shechita sa Pesach overrides Shabbos. Elu these three things shehein mishum shvus the only also med rabbonon lo yitchu es Shabbos. Is there any reason to believe? Is there any logic to say that they're not going to override Shabbos? Omelam Rabbi Shua. Rabbi Shua said to Rabbi Yezer, I'll prove to you that it's possible to have something which a situation where an Issa de Iraisa is overridden and other Isurim de Rabbonon or not. Yomtov Yechiach. I can prove it to you from Yomtov. Sheitiru boy Mishum Malacha. That you're allowed to shecht and cook on Yom Tov. Nonetheless, also by Mishum Shvus, you're not allowed to bring food from outside the Tchum, even though Tchum in on Yom Tov is only the Rabbonon. You're not allowed to bring food to eat on Yom Tov from outside the Tchum. However, you are allowed to do Bishul, Afia, Shrita on Yom Tov. So you see that it's possible to have a situation that Melochem in Atayra is Mutter, and the Shvus that you could have done before Shabbos, or Yom Tov is Aser. Or even if you couldn't have done it before Shabbos and Yom Tov in that case, it's also. Omer Yezer. Rabbi Yezer responded to Rabbi Yeshua, how can you bring me proof from Yom Tov, from not being able to bring food from outside the Tchum and Yom Tov to the case of doing what you need to do to bring the Korban Pesach? Maza Yeshua, what is this Rabbi Yeshua? Maraya Roshus le Mitzvah, how can you bring me a proof from from eating on Yom Tov, which is just a Roshus, it's not a Mitzvah, to the case of of Pesach, which is Tzorich Kavoya, where I need to do these things of either Harkavosoi or Havosoi Michutz Letchum or Chatichas Yveltoi in order to do the mitzvah of Korban Pesach. How can you compare the two? And and the and the Gemara is then the, then the Mishnah there continues, but let's get to our Gemara now. Rabbi Yeshua letamei. The Gemara is saying that Rabbi Yeshua was not bothered about that question that. Rabbi Yeza asked him, how can you compare the, the, what we need to do for Korban Pesach and Yom Tov? Eating on Yom Tov is not a mitzvah, and, and doing the preparations for Korban Pesach is something you need for the mitzvah of Korban Pesach. Rabbi Shua letamei, Rabbi Shua himself argued with Rabbi Yeza, who held that, Rabbi Yeza indeed held that on Yom Tov there's not necessarily a mitzvah to eat, but Rabbi Shua says there's a mitzvah to eat, even on Yom Tov. So according to Rabbi Shua, the comparison between bringing fruit from outside the Tchum on Yom Tov and bringing fruit from outside the Tchum, or bringing the Korban Pesach from outside the Tchum, according to Rabbi Shua, it's a very good comparison. Rabbi Shua let de Omar Simchas Yom Tov Nami Mitzvahi, the Simcha on Yom Tov, which is expressed with eating, is a mitzvah. The Tani will learn in the Braisa. A person can choose to either spend Yom Tov eating and drinking for Yom Tov or to sit and to learn Torah the whole Yom Tov and not eat anything. He can even be fasting. According to Rabbi that's okay. There's no chiyuv or mitzvah particularly to express your simcha with eating. Rabbi Yeshua says no. Chelku. Split up the day of Yom Tov. Half of it is for eating and drinking. And the second half is to sit and learn in the Beis HaMedrash. Rabbi Yechonon said, Both Rabbi Yezer and Rabbi Shua came from the same Pasuk. Kosov Echod Oimer in one Pasuk it says, referring to the last day Shvi Shal Pesach. It says in the Pasuk, Sheishes Yomim Toich Al Matzis, Uva Yoyim HaShvi Atzeres Tashem Elikecho, should be an assembly dedicated to Hashem Elikecho, Loisar Semelocha, that's the last day of Pesach, is a Yom Tov. Because of Echad Oimer, on a different Yom Tov regarding Shmini Atzeres, it says, Bayoyim HaShmini Atzeres Tia Lochem, that it should be Lochem. Regarding Shvi Shal Pesach, it says, Atzeres Lashem Elikecho, it should be for Hashem. Regarding Shemid, uh, that, that was regarding Shvi Shal Pesach. Regarding Shemin Yatzeres, it says, Tia Lochem, it should be for you. So Rabbi Yezer saw, Rabbi Yezer says, you can choose, Oi Kuloi Lashem, either dedicate Yom Tov exclusively to Hashem, Oi Kuloi Lochem, or dedicate it for yourselves. Rabbi Shua Sova, no, Rabbi Shua says that on every Yom Tov you have to keep both. Chilkuhu, Chetz Yil Hashem, Vechetz Yil Lochem. Avam Simon, says the Gemara, Omer Rabbi Loza, Hakel Moidim, everybody agrees. That means also Rabbi Leza, also Rabbi Yeshua agree. But at Tzeres, that on Shvuos, but in on Nami Lochem. You have to spend, have some time being happy. How, how are you happy? By eating and drinking. And my Tama, 
Why? Why should Shavuos be different to any other Yom Tov? Yom Shanitna by Torah, who is the day that Torah was given to us. Rashi says that you should be happy on that day with eating and drinking. Lahara is to show Shanoyach or Makubal that it's, it's very much acceptable upon us. Yom Zel Yisrael, this day for Klai Yisrael, Shanitna Torah boy, that Torah was given to us. Continues the Gemara, Omar Rabbah. Hakel Moedim, everyone agrees that on Shabbos, that on Shabbos, you can't spend the whole day sitting and learning and fasting. You have to spend t- some of the time on Shabbos being happy, eating and drinking. My time, why? Because it says in the Pasuk, that, that Shabbos has to be a delight. And the way that Shabbos is a delight is by eating and drinking. Omer Yosef. Everyone agrees that on Purim you have to spend some of the time in, 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 with your own delights with eating and drinking. My tama, you may mishtev a simcha. So we don't learn it from the word simcha. The Marsha explains because simcha you can have even by sitting and learning. But from the mishtev you see that you have to spend time drinking and basking in physical delights. Ksiv beit. It's what it says in the Pasuk in the Megillah. Continues the Gemara. Mar bereidu Ravina, on the son Mar, the son of Ravina, kula shat av Yosef betanisa. He would fast every day of the year. Lebar besides me atzarta for Shavuos, Upuria and Purim, umay le yoyim de Kippur and erev yoyim Kippur. Atzeres, why did he not fast on Shavuos? Yoyim shenit nabo b'teira, as we saw before. Puria, why didn't he fast on Purim? You may mish tevasim chuksiv. Umay le yoyim de Kippur. Why did he not fast on Erev Yom Kippur? The Tony Chia Barav Midifti. It's from a pasuk. The pasuk says, "V'inisem es nafshes seichem." You should afflict your your spirits, your nefesh. B'tish on the ninth of Tishri, which is the day before Yom Kippur. Asks the Gemara, "V'chi b'tish al misanim v'aloi basiri misanim." How can the pasuk say that you afflict yourselves on the ninth of Tishri? Yom Kippur is on the tenth of Tishri. That's when we fast. El aloi melachot to teach us. That indeed you only have to fast on Yom Kippur on the 10th of Nisan. What would you normally do on the 9th of Nisan? You're allowed to eat. The Pasuk is teaching us that if you do the things you normally do on the 9th, which is eating, it's as if you fasted on Yom Kippur. Boy, anyone who eats or drinks on the 9th of Nisan, on the 9th of Tishri and Erev Yom Kippur, the Pasuk views it as if Ki'ilu Misane. Tishri Vasiri, as if you fasted on the 9th and the 10th, and the Mepharsh would give many different explanations, but Rashi here doesn't explain it, so we're not going to go into that now. Continues the Gemara. Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef, on Shvus, Omar, he would say, Avdili, prepare for me, Igla Tilsa, a third born calf. Third born is the choicest meat. This is when the mother is completely mature and the child, children, the third child she has, is, is the best meat. Omar of Yosef would say, If not for what that day of Shavuos, which is the day we got the Torah, caused for us, then I would just be another Yosef in the marketplace. What makes me different from all those Yosefs in the marketplace is this day. And Rashi says, Hi Yoima Shalomadati Torah, I learned Torah Venisri Mamti, and I was elevated. I became a more elevated person. I'm not just a Yosef in the marketplace. I'm a Rav Yosef who's learning Torah. I'm a different type of Rav Yosef. And as a as a hoida, as a thanks, or as a an appreciation for that day and for this being able to spend his whole life in an elevated state, then on this day of Shvuas, he would prepare a special meal. Continues the Gemara. Rav Sheshes recalled Klausin Yoimin Mahadur Le Talmud. Rav Sheshes would review everything he had learned every 30 days. Vitali, and he would lean the koi and stand by Ibra the Dasha at the bolt of the door, the entranceway of the doorway. The Omar, and he would say, Chadoi Nafshoi, my nefesh, my soul, my spirit, rejoice. Chadoi Nafshoi. He would say that twice. Lecho Karoi, it's for you that I have read all this Torah. Rashi says, for you and for you, and, and for you need this, I learned Torah. 
And the Rabbi Nuchananul says, Kadesha Tehesha Ichenes Betach Loilam Abo. Because that's the way to be calm and to have a good place in Oilam Abo is to learn Torah. Lachot Anoi. And for you, my spirit, my nefesh, I studied all this Torah. Asks the Gemara, Aini, is the only advantage of learning Torah just for a person himself and his Oilam Abo? Vamar Rebelazar Belaz did Rebelazar not say, Il Moli Torah, if not for Torah, Loiniskaim or Shemaim Varet. The whole world, the whole universe, is dependent on our learning Torah. So the whole world benefits, not just ourselves. Shenemar, as it says in the Pasuk, Imloi Barisi Yoimum Vulaila, had I not made a covenant with Torah that is studied day and night, like it says in the Pasuk, I would not have established the laws of the sky and the earth. So how can you say that the, the main pleasure, the one that gained from the Torah is nafshoi, is our nefesh, the whole world gained? Says the Gemara, you're right, but Meikora initially, when a person sits down to learn, ki ovid inish, I doubted in ovid, that when he sits to learn, he, and when he start, when he initially sets out to learn, he's got to be aware that he's doing it for his own nefesh, he's doing it for his own soul, to be able to find a secure and good place in Oilam Abba. And in the next year, we're going to continue from here.